Hello everyone, and welcome again to another episode of The Committee Reads. I'm your host, Kaiju X, and with me today, I have Grayshot151, GVR, Joe, and Nagoda. And today, we will be reading Match 161, Rodan vs. Dagara, by Michael Minet and Tyler Treshock. Guanabara Bay. Once a near-legend paradise now lay filled with pollution. The poor residents hated the filth others dumped near their shores, but one day it began to disappear from the dip bay. Some cheered, others saw it as a sign of positive things to come. As more of the trash disappeared under the waves, the citizens of the city ignored the fishermen who claimed to see a giant beast moving under the layers of rubbish. Their claims fell on deaf ears until the final bits of pollution disappeared and the beast decided to reveal itself. The people of Rio, Rio de Janeiro fled for their lives as the bay turned red. Barums rose to the surface by the hundreds and shortly after the creature creating them followed. A dragon-like creature emerged from the bay. Seawater poured down from its emerald hide. Unlike the thousands of newly created barums, their creator was ancient. Thousands of years ago, an advanced civilization created a creature, the creature in hopes that it would rid the, them all of Rid all of, rid of all the pollution they despise. There we go. <clears throat> it proves it proved a success and consumed everything unwanted, but eventually the creature's desire to consume overcame it. The dragon destroyed them in the process before going into a state of sleep for thousands of years, waiting for the time when its hunger could be lessened. Thanks to humanity, that time had come. Now was the time for Dagara to feed. Dagara made his way onto dry land with its destination, the inner portion of the city. The dragon guessed it would hold all the contents for an appetizing lunch. Dagara ventured further into Rio de Janeiro, crushing cars under his feet and any unlucky citizen who ran for their lives. As the sea dragon reached the heart of the city, his eyes widened with shock. No, there was nothing to consume, only scraps. Realizing his trek was for nothing, Dagara turned around. The dragon angrily moaned and ready to move back to, into the bay until he heard a loud screech. Curious, the dragon looked up into the sky. Dagara focused his vision, yet he could not see the source of the sound. Deciding it was his imagination, Dagara ready to move until the screech's source revealed itself to him. Thanks to the infamous airborne creature on the planet, so the most infamous airborne creature on the planet soared past the dragon. Rodan had been searching for a meal for some time, and thanks to the chaos of the city attracting him, the mutant pterodactyl had found his newest target. Attempting to catch, uh, catch it off guard, Rodan swooped down with his talons open, hoping to get an instant kill. Pass. The sea dragon quickly hopped out of the way, causing Rodan to miss his target. Dagara scowled in frustration. He didn't know who this monster was, but he had just made a big mistake trying to attack him. Dagara roared at the mutated Tyrannodon, a warning to back off or die. Letting out a cackle of his own, Rodan accepted the dragon's challenge. Hearing Rodan's response, Dagara attacked first as he parted his jaws and fired a poisonous jet, jet stream shockwave. Rodan didn't have time to react and the beam glanced across his body. Sparks flew from his spiked armored chest and the Tyrannon crashed to the ground on his back. Before Rodan could get up, Dagara charged toward him and bit down onto his wing, hoping to cripple the pterodactyl. Rodan let out a slight cry but focused on the pain. He wouldn't have the dumb dragon ground him. Quickly, he pecked the dragon in the face, forcing Dagara to let go of his wing and stagger off of him. As Dagara took time to recover, Rodan released a beam of his own, striking Dagara's forehead. The sea dragon wailed out in pain. But luckily, due to his thick, durable flesh, the, be the beam barely scorched his hide. The pain still irritated the green leviathan, though, edging him to make Rodan pay as soon as possible. Dagara moved to attack, but Rodan released his beam once more, hitting Dagara. Rodan continued his ray to keep his foe pinned, not wanting to give him a chance to counter. Dagara groaned from the anguish. He could feel the beam burning him, but it wasn't enough to stop him. Dagara quickly lunged and headbutted Rodan, forcing the pterodactyl to crash into a nearby building. At first, only a small portion of it caved in, though gravity proved too strong a force. Rodan glanced up merely to witness the whole structure collapse, covering the pterodactyl in a mountain of rubble. 
deciding pa- to uh, end pass. this. Pass. Pass. Oh, sorry. Pass. <laughs> deciding to end this fight, Dagar unleashed his entire arsenal on the feature. Poisonous jet stream shockwaves and crimson energy attacks engulfed the entire spot, blasting the feature apart. Dirt, debris, and rocks flew high into the air, and a dense fire consumed the surrounding area. Final explosion gave Dagara satisfaction. The battle was finished, and the dragon watched the fires dance across the remaining rubble. The dragon with victory achieved echoed an arrogant roar to all in his range. Underneath the rubble, two eyes opened from the sound. Rodan exploded out of the rubble and took into the air. Cars, people, and rubble flew up off the street as the Lord of the Sky flew directly at Dagara. Dagara remained still with shock, allowing Rodan to collide with him. The green leviathan slid back slightly, only for the pterosaur to continue his assault by picking his forehead. Blood seeped from the wounds, and the dragon's own skull began to crack. Dagara could take agony, whether it was pain or hungry, b- hunger, but no, this was too far too much. Dagara screamed and tried to move backward, but Rodan continued his assault even after a beam to his chest. The dragon had to think of something fast, but with no strategies in mind, Dagara tried something basic. Using all of his strength, Dagara jumped back and propelled itself forward and rammed into Rodan, sending the mutant pterosaur flying backward. In mid-flight over the ground, the pterodactyl took to the air and into his domain. Rodan screeched to Dagara of his advantage, merely for it to open his shoulder sacks that held his greatest weapon, Barum. Like flak, the Leviathan unleashed payloads of the starfish into the sky. Dagara missed dozens of shots, but one likely connected, latching dozens onto Rodan's left foot. Soon, Rodan felt something burning and eating away his flesh. Screeching in pain, Rodan looked down to see red star-like creatures releasing acid. Quickly, the pterodactyl burned away the barons on his foot, revealing the cause of his attack. Most of the flesh on his foot had been eaten away by the red devilfish. Now enraged, Rodan decided to make his enemy suffer for its insulting attack. Pass or no? One more. Looking at Dagar with fire in his eyes, Rodan cackled mockingly at his foe. Why are you cackling? You just got your foot burned off. You think it's... He thinks it's funny. (laughs) Yeah, I have the upper advantage in this fight as he misses a foot. I have I have an upper advantage of in this fight. I don't have a foot. (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean? It it was holding me back. (laughs) Brandon is mocking Dagara's fetish. Dagara focused his eyes, opened his wings, and took to the sky to silence his enemy. Rodan's eyes widened with shock that the skin flaps were actually wings, but the revelation barely mattered. The sky was his home, his domain, and nothing rivaled him. Pass. Dagara released his beam, which Rodan quickly evaded. Rodan then released his beam, striking the Leviathan across his backside. As Rodan continued to outmaneuver him, Dagara decided he was unable to match his opponent in the air, but maybe he could outwest him. Dagara, with the revelation, swiftly changed course and aimed itself at Rodan. As they both neared Rodan at the last... Oh, they both both neared neared Rodan Rodan at the last second. Yeah, they, they both went to Rodan. The the two cigars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. Can we have second Dagara in the KDUC? Gosh, darn. I like the better idea that fire, that uh, Rodan from Legendary Rodan's in this. Or you know the <laughs> the second Rodan we didn't authorize until much later. It's the light Rodan. <laughs> <laughs> Rodan at the last second angled itself under and shredded Dagara's underbelly with the spikes on his chest. The dragon howled in pain, but not before striking Rodan's head with his dick. I mean, tail. Caught off guard, Rodan began to plummet at high speed toward the ground before regaining his its composure. Compose, poser, composure. With ease, Rodan changed course back toward Dagara with fire now sparking his beak. Uh, do I get one more? Uh, sparking his... uh, you have like three, uh, four more. Or wait, you, you still have like a bunch. Oh, okay. More. Oh, okay. Uh, powerful beams crisscross through the sky, sending the city below below on fire as they miss their t- intended targets. The two continued discharging their respective rays, nearing each other with each attack until Dagara flew at Rodan. Rodan swiftly dodged and hovered over his foe, releasing his heat beam directly on Dagara's face. 
Degara screamed in agony and plummeted to the ground, crashing into the middle of the burning city. With his foe blind and stagnant at the city center, Rodan cackled with slight amusement. The sea dragon appeared confused and stumbled around at the city center, but Rodan would not allow him to recover and landed on top of him. Rodan prepared to deliver a final blow to Dagara's cracked skull with his beak only for Dagara to look at him. Dagara's eyes focused with satisfaction as at the ruse and his jaws opened, revealing purple energy. A powerful, poisonous jet stream shockwave struck Rodan's head, sending the pterodactyl plummeting onto his back. Before Rodan had the chance to get up, Dagara bashed in Rodan's skull with his right front leg. The dragon struck the pterodactyl twice before it swiped him with his claws and returned to the air. With his foe appearing still eager to fight and his wounds causing great agony, Dagara thought hard about options. He had to win this fight fast, and that was not possible on land or air. No, he needed to go to his territory, the sea. The pterodactyl was not adapted to the water like he was in the air. And with the, that connection, Dagara realized how it could finish it, this battle. The dragon had to just had to wait for the right time. Uh, is that four? Okay. Rodan unleashed an, ir- an irritated screech and flew out and flew directly at Dagara. While Phaethon lowered its shoulders and waited until the Tyrandon was in range before pass. Boom. Rodan cried in agony as Baron attached himself. The pterodactyl plummeted to the ground, and Nagara rushed toward the fallen creature. Rodan panicked, falling at him. Nagara grabbed him by the and charged toward the Both monsters barreled through structures, leveling a straight line of building to Nagara found his Garan dived into the, the bay, but not before Rodan discharged its heat, separating the water, the, separating the two in the water. Rodan thrashed him, trying desperately to escape the water and gain some. Down below the surface of the bay, the Garan decided it was time to finish his boat. The dragon swirled under first great rings, over the second, and under water world. Sorry about that. Uh, go. Someone. Okay, where was that? Uh, seconds before something something. I'm actually having a hard time hearing you. I actually have no idea where the microphone on these new headphones are. Anyway. Uh, oh, okay. Oh wait, no, I see. Creating rings, but within seconds, an underwater whirlpool formed and rose toward the surface. Uh, I'll just reread that paragraph. Fair enough. Down below the surface of the bay, the guard decided it was time to finish his boat off. The dragon swirled under the wave, at first creating wing rings, but within seconds, an underwater world was formed and rose toward the sea. Rodan barely opened his leg. Barrel had been finally fallen out, merely to watch the surround suddenly become filled with more barren lightning. Rodan screeched in terror at the horror filled water from him, but it was no use. Soon, he found himself in the tornado, thrashing and struggling. He tried to escape. The mutant turned on the sound girl, his movements lessened, and eventually the tornado proved. As much as one had tried, there was no escape from the water of death. Barons attacked on the road and unleashed their dead feet. Pterodactyl flinched from the pain, but his body had not struggled any longer. The acid burned away. At the edge of consciousness, Rodan now faced a fate far worse than death. As quickly as it had arrived, the tornado ceased, allowing Rodan's skeletal corpse to fall from it. How is that a fate worse than death? He's dead. (laughs) (laughs) Dagara watched as Rodan's Rodan's lifeless body sunk to the seabed, with the Baron's axe still eating away the remaining. He had won the fight, and now it was time to fulfill his purpose. Consumed, 
I mean, what's he gonna consume? The corpse is just like massive. I think just more garbage. Uh, Winner Dagara. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wait. Winner Dagara. How how can he eat, how can he eat more garbage? He already ate Rodan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, Rodan had to have learned his his lesson because his movements lessened. <laughs> uh, was, this the, was this the first time Dagar won a KUC uh, besides solo? the Despicadora match? Yeah, solo. I think so. It, I don't think he's won any. I, he lost against Biolante, like the original. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. Th- there's a dog. There is a there is a Doge. There's always uh You just never hear them. Get the bitch out. <laughs> yep. No, no, that was Someone important. asked the dog what their opinion on the match is. I don't care what its opinion is. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. 161. <laughs> 161, I think, counts so far as the first solo match Dagara has won. And I think likewise has remained the only match Dagara has won on one to one. Oh wait, no, two thirty eight. Never mind. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, two thirty eight. Yeah, two thirty eight. And then he won with Desgador against Hedera, but that was pretty much it. Right. Right. Yeah. No. So yeah. Two. So three victories, and only two of them were solo. There we go. Yeah. Doesn't need more victories. Yeah. What you're saying. Yes. <laughs> just, he does. Or just more matches. Period. Like. As long as he's used well. Yeah, so Kaiju X, what were your thoughts on this match? Uh, perfectly. I think there are a couple little errors, maybe a couple extra punctuation marks that could have been used. I And uh, there are a couple little typos like lessened instead of lessened. Um, and the lack of a comma between road, like... Distance closed in Rodan. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, no. Like I said, a lot more. It needs a, just a little bit of fine tuning. Otherwise, not. This is a. It's all right. It's perfectly fine. I don't see it as being like too crazy. But at the same time, it's like it is just. It's a nice little match, and I think that's really at most what I could say about it. I don't think it, it's at least of the basic KWC qualification. And for what it's worth, it's fine. It's it's not too insane. It's you know, pretty basic. I can't say I can't really say much on it because it's not like uh, anything too crazy. So a solid fight all around, though they were utilized nicely, just not memorably. So, uh, but yeah, no, that's just me. Um, going from top to bottom, Gray Shot. What did you think of it? And I guess because your name is attached to this one too, what was your involvement with this one? Well, this one was a match where I had to do a lot of editing, which is why I have my name on it. Jeez, like, how bad was the original? I mean, I edited probably 80% of this, maybe 60, 60% I basically rewrote. Jeez. Um, yeah, it was sizable. Um, yeah, but it wasn't very... What, uh, was this Was this Michael Monet's first match? I think it was. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, but no, I I think I I enjoyed again. It was a basic match, but I think I had more fun with the banner. The banner I really enjoyed making. Oh yeah, no, the banner. Yeah. Oh I yeah, the banner's this. really good. Yeah, no, I like the banner. There's a nice bit of action going on. It's Rodan, Dagar in the air, and then there's the uh, like you know the statue of Jesus in the back. That's like, oh yeah, no, that's the banner striking. The match itself kind of isn't, and that, it's like you know, it's it's a it's on a basic it's K, fundamental KBC levels of basic. So it's like. Yeah, no, it's not terrible by any means. It's just average. Yeah, the monsters have some personality, but that's pretty much the only highlight in regards to the match. Like, it's cool to have the tornado knock out Rodan, but... Oops, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Uh, GVR, what'd you think of it? It's fine, I guess. I don't really have anything to say too much. The action was okay. Sounds so, sounds so sad. <laughs> Are you okay, GPR? No. <laughs> Dude, blast it. The match wasn't that bad. <laughs> There's just isn't really any, a lot to say about this match. I don't really care too much about it. It just exists, yeah. and that's about it. 
Yeah, like it's cool to see Degaro get a win, but like I would rather he be in more matches that are good. Yeah, I think 238 was a better representation than yep. a, I, I'd say a cooler match in regards to his implementation. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Though I will say this match is referenced in 211? No. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, 211. Yeah. Because they make note of uh, a green dragon attacking Rio de Janeiro and I think Titanosaurus in the Sea of Japan. Because oh, it's basically yeah. like a nod to the matches I had to write a lot. I was like, I'll just like kind of nod, you know, and make a little reference to them. Everything that has Grey Shot in the writer's list is part of his series. Except for 300. But I think he's going to find a way to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the GOAT has already established that like his series are all like a multiverse. So. Yeah, Nick, Nick just had a bad uh, time off mushrooms and he just thought 300. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you're going to do it? <laughs> anyway. I mean, that's the plan for one of my matches at least. But oomch. Oh boy. Anyway, uh, a freaking uh, yeah. No, uh, Joe, what'd you think of it? Well, I thought it was all right. Uh, it's a basic KWC. Uh, a lot of repeating of names. Uh, a lot of beams. Uh. The ending was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I like the I like the visual imagery of Rodan's skeleton falling. That that sounds really cool. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, other than that, it's an alright match. The banner is re the banner is the best is the best thing though. It's really good. Yeah, the banner is the best. It's great. Banner's the best part of it. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, Nagoda, what'd you think of one sixty one? Well, the banner. Actually, let me go back to the match. The banner looks nice. I like how Ronan's being like a man in scout clouds. There's a shadow. Uh, the match itself was pretty okay. I liked how it ended with the tournament with the sea baron tornado that he does. Uh, a lot of like minor errors here and there, but this was a long time ago. That's good stuff. Uh, otherwise, this was pretty fun. This is a pretty fun match. Alright. Uh, and with that said, this is, has been Match 161. And we'll see you guys next time for Match 162. Till then, everyone. We're only th two, three matches away. To the end. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Careful, Joe. You're going to give me a copyright strike. <laughs> James Cameron's gonna get on your ass. Why, sir, I'm honored. <laughs>